folks, this is Kurt Von Annen, and I wanted to make this quick webinar on the Power Sport Academy uh, to drive home just a couple of issues. For one, today ends the 20% off on signing up for the Power Sport Academy. Uh, we've been running this sale, well, for a combination of two weeks now. We had a 21% discount, and then we had a 20% discount. The 20% discount is meant to celebrate the 20 years of 9-11, and you use the coupon code 911. Uh, to get that 20% off. Now, if you take a look at the board behind me, <laughs> let me let me see what I got here for you. Uh, we know that the training season uh, for a lot of power sports dealerships is from basically October to April, right? October to April is basically how folks do that. Now, if you're part of the Power Sport Academy mail list or you've been part of the social media, you see that we've kind of already done some things, right? We, we, I've got a funnel, right? I've got a sales funnel. Uh, when you join the list, it's gonna send you information about the Power Sport Academy and some coupons and things like that. We've got a white paper. So what are the pain points of running a motorcycle dealership? What are the things that Power Sport Academy is gonna help you with? That white paper answers some of that. A free peek, right? Give everybody a chance to take a free lesson. Take a free lesson inside the Power Sport Academy and see if it's something that is for you or for your staff. And then, you know, a landing page. Obviously, I built the landing page that offers those things. And so there's a landing page that we've made for the Power Sport Academy that gives people access to the white paper, the free lesson, or to schedule a discovery call with me. That discovery call usually answers a lot of the questions that a dealer might have. So if, you, if you're a dealer owner and you've got some pain points about your dealership, like customers from service reaching you directly on your cell phone, right? To complain about how long the bike's been in service that it hasn't been looked at yet or that parts are on order or whatever. Like, why are those calls coming direct to your cell phone? You have people that should be fading that heat for you, right? Uh, let's take a look at another pain point, right? Uh, motorcycles or equipment that gets delivered from your service department back to the customer. And then the customer's got to come back and complain about damage to their unit. Right? We've got some strategies in place that help alleviate some of that. How about the phone's ringing off the hook, right? People are answering the phones, but you're not seeing business or revenue generated through the use of that phone or that phone call. And, and so today in today's webinar, I want to address that specific pain point. And I want to give you an idea of some of the content that your students would see if they were in the Power Sport Academy and also some of the coaching that they would receive. Because remember, the Power Sport Academy is not a two-day seminar, a three-day seminar. It's not something where you're taking staff out of your building so they're not generating income for you because they're, they're not working at your building, right? Worse, you're paying them to not be there because you got to pay them an average of their salary while they're not in your building. So it's like you're paying for them and they're not working for you. Then you got what? Airfare, hotel, rental car, a per diem to feed them right? All of these things that are going on. And now think about travel requirements. Are you paying for like negative COVID tests or things to get expedited so that you can get them on the airplane, in the rental car, in the hotel, and off to the facility where the training is going to be held? It's kind of a nightmare right now. The cool thing about the Power Sport Academy is I wanted to take things virtual before COVID was a thing. That when I was an OEM trainer, one of the number one complaints I got was travel expenses, like I just illustrated for you. So I said, well, let's build a virtual program. Let's build something where service writers and service managers don't have to leave the building for personal development. They can get this training and they can have access to me for the year because this, like I said, it's not a two-day session or a three-day webinar, a webinar, a three-day uh, seminar somewhere. It's not a rah-rah thing where they come back with 17 new ideas after two days of training and they get awash in their own nonsense, right? They, they can't even think about what to do first because they've got these 17 things they got to put in place at your dealership. Yeah, let's go, let's go. And then at what happens? A week in, two weeks in, three weeks in, after a month, that energy's gone. There might be one gold nugget that sticks with the training and, and maybe you see a, 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 a blip on the radar of an improvement. Now, as someone that's offered that training in the past, it's a heartbreaker for me. When I was at Ducati and running the training for Ducati, one of the things I would do is, is I would have a follow-up program to, to talk to dealers and to talk to uh, service writers and service managers after a fixed operations training course to say, hey, wh what are the one or two gold nuggets you implemented? What were the results? What's another one or two gold nuggets that I can help you think about or, or give you a strategy to implement so we can see some growth? And that's why 
that company saw substantial growth through their fixed operations training when I was there. Let's take a look at how we're doing this, right? We've got social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, different email accounts that people are helping me out with. Uh, and the emails going out to people like what you're seeing in, in the funnels. When I say that the training season, right there, training season uh, is October to April, that's when dealers typically train their staff. PowerSport Academy is not operating in a training season. It's operating year round. So when you sign up with the PowerSport Academy, you're gonna get access to the curriculum full-time, 24 seven, right? No holidays, right? 24 seven, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. That content is up on the PowerSport Academy and your students are getting to partake in that, in that foundational theory type information. However, they're also gonna get homework from me and from my team. And my team and I support the PowerSport Academy with monthly coaching calls. We started out doing weekly, it was too much. It was too much for the dealers. It wasn't too much for me. I barely had any customers when I got started, right? So for me, I looked forward to getting on the calls all the time because the more I was on the calls, the more I was able to gauge, is this working? Is this not working? How can I keep making this thing better, right? But it was too much for the dealers. And they told me, the, the owners told me as much. They said, I can't keep having these guys get off the floor for an hour every week for this call. It's just too much. And so then we went down to two weeks. Now, I still have a couple of dealers on the two-week plan. Every two weeks, we, we call. And those owners appreciate that time because they've seen the growth. I got one dealer who, who said on a, on a call just two days ago, today's Friday, just yesterday. He said on a call just yesterday, you know, what's really cool about it is this, 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 and this. And then he talked about, we're finally in the black. We're finally making profit. You know, and that to me was, was a real reward because they had some obstacles to overcome, which they have. And the growth and the leadership that I'm seeing from such a, a young leader at this dealership is, is really cool. It's fun to see it happen, okay? He went on for about three minutes about the benefits of being part of the Power Sport Academy. And at the end of, a, uh, of his talk, I said, I said, dude, I wish so much I would have hit record. I would have loved to have had that as a testimonial talk, right? But here I am today, and I'm going to give you guys kind of a, a quick peek into some foundational material that we have in the Power Sport Academy. And today I wanna to focus on phone etiquette, using the phone as an effective sales tool. Now, you might be coming to this or, or you might be watching this replay and you're going, what in the world is Kurt doing? Like, I need some secret sauce to teach my service writers how to optimize service flow. Uh, you know, we need to know, you know, how to add lines to the ticket. We need, we need to know how to optimize um, you know, parts to labor. We need to optimize, you know, how many hours we can sell out of our hours bucket, you know, in our, in our uh, dispatch software, you know, if you're at that level, right? If you're working at that level. And I'm here to tell you this, no, no, that's not what you need. It's so hard for people to hear it sometimes. It, it's difficult for people to make a, a recognition, but as a dealer owner, uh, chances are you're thinking your staff is operating up here somewhere at this level, right? You're, you're expecting, well, I've hired this person as a counter professional. My parts guy is handling, you know, this much flow through the parts counter. My service guy is operating at this level of perfection. You know, my service manager is on top of his service writing team and is coordinating with the parts people at this level. You know, my service manager is, you know, meeting the needs of my sales department at this level. I'm here to tell you that ain't happening. Chances are they're down here somewhere. Here's the deal. How many people have had professional communications training working in these positions? Most haven't. So you're making the assumption that you've hired a professional with experience and you expect them to be at this level. And that's a, that's a sane expectation. But the problem is they're really operating here. If you start to audit the phone calls or the emails or the messages that go out from your departments, you'll realize that your people are not communicating with your customers at the level you wish that they were. So if you take a look at the content that I have inside the Power Sport Academy, we talk about theory that elevates the level of communication, elevates internal culture, elevates some processes and procedures, and then gets them thinking about their key performance indicators so that they are operating at your original expectation. Once we get them to this level of expectation, well, then we can start talking about things like on-site consulting or travel training or all these things. But let's face facts. If you thought everybody was here and they're really operating at this level, 
what's your business going to look at look like when they get to your expectations? It's going to be phenomenal, right? And so let's do this. Let's let's do a shared screen. And I'm going to jump into just a quick tour of the Power Sport Academy and, and get to the content that we want to talk about today. So right now, uh, if you're seeing the replay on this, you should be seeing the homepage to the Power Sport Academy. We've got, you know, a little commercial at the top with, with the call to action here. It says schedule a discovery call. That's the key right there. If you're not going to, you know, sign up a small dealership, and I say a small dealership, but if you're not going to sign up, you know, one or two people to train, whether that be monthly or annually, annually saves you about two months uh, worth of fee, right? So it's either 349 a month or 39.95 for the year that trains one of your staff members. Uh, if you've got a bigger dealership and you're going to train a service writer, a service manager, maybe a general manager and a parts manager, and then you want to take the training yourself, you know, that that's five, right? That's five people that you'd be training. So five times four, right, is, is how much, right? That's $20,000. Instead of spending $20,000 for the year, you'd spend $10,995 and poof, we would just train the whole store Everyone would have their own user account. They'd all be their own students, uh, but they would all be within your account. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, let's say you're a bigger, let's say you're, you're Freedom, right? Or you're Ride Now or you're Go AZ. You've got multiple locations, right? You're Mountain Motorsports. Someone else I need to call, right? But if you're uh, one of these types of organizations, we have an enterprise program. And with the enterprise program, what that means is instead of paying $11,000 you know, per dealership, uh, you would basically fill out the form here. The form says, who are you? Who do you represent? How many locations do you have? And how many registered learners uh, do you have in your organization? From that information, we'll come up with a proposal that makes sense for you for a year's worth of training. And it says, what's your biggest pain point or goal with the training? You know, what's interesting is a lot of people say, well, it's business, you know, it's all about money. Uh, some people say it's all about corporate culture. Like we're making a ton of money, but everybody's miserable and our employee turnover is really high, right? So everyone's got a different goal. And if people can articulate what the main or the primary goal is, it really helps me and my team customize the delivery of our training so we can help you attain that goal more quickly. So why do we invest in training, right? How much is the program? Who is the training for? Here's a key one. What if you don't like it? I got a 30 day money back guarantee, okay? What about hiring? It says, man, if you need help with hiring, I've got a source in my network that I can help you to make sure that you get the right person for the right job for the right team. Super, super important to have everything match. Here you can check out a free lesson for free, right? To jump in, check out a free lesson. We've got some words of affirmation that people have given to me and you can join the community so that you get the emails and the announcements and things like that that come out. Now, let's get right into the meat of today's webinar. We're gonna go into courses. Courses is gonna open up and, and from this screen, from this perspective, you're gonna see four main courses. One is building teams with love, adding the right people to the team at the right time for the right reasons. So building a team with love, love is an acronym, right? So it's like, it's like add a, add a leader or an observer or a verifier or someone that's a little more emotional, right? But, but you need a blend of those four types of people to make that happen, right? And we got Power Sports Fixed Operations where we actually talk about things like the service sales funnel and how things work through the department to optimize efficiency and profit. So, so we cover that stuff in theory there. We've got what is key performance indicators, right? What's a KPI? So we help people understand how they generate their numbers and how to make decisions based on those numbers. And then here's the meat of today's talk and that's phone and sales etiquette. So if we take a look at phone and sales etiquette, I'll click and get us into that. And you'll see that we've got, you know, entrance to the course, kind of a, an intro call, like how to answer incoming phone calls. And then talks about why this type of training is important. If we talk about the lessons, we've got a lesson on answering phone calls, one on making the appointment, selling on voicemail and phone, right? Because those are two different transactions. You know, one, you're just leaving a recording for someone and one, you're actually having a conversation where you want to be an active listener and you want to, you know, make sure that you're, what, what's the want or need and how can I fill that want or need? Owning the problem. Sometimes things go wrong. Like maybe the porter knocks a motorcycle over. You got to tell the customer it happened, right? Well, there's a way to do that that doesn't end up in a negative situation. There's a way to take ownership of a problem and be an advocate for the customer, make things happen, okay? And then finishing the sale, 
by phone. It says as a service professional, you'll want to perform what's called active delivery. Active delivery is a term I use in a lot of the training. And, it, and it's really just you know, recounting the transaction, uh, reaffirming what the customer had said as a want or need, and how your company fulfilled that want or need, what the value of that want or need was, what you agreed on for a dollar amount, and then to make sure that you ask any questions, comments, or concerns. Make sure that you, you have that person leave with the utmost confidence in the service that you just provided for them. What's interesting about this is I look at the training that we offer through the PowerSport Academy, and I talk to people that work at these service counters, and I'm like, if you just do this, if you just do this piece, you'll be doing more than 80% of the dealerships in your vicinity. You're already going to be the cream at the top. Customers are going to want to come and deal with you if you treat them with the respect and, and the value of the relationship that it needs. And unfortunately, like I said, a lot of people in industry, any industry, right? It could be computer repair. It could be automotive. It can be you know, heavy equipment, backloaders, whatever, motorcycles, jet skis, boats. You might be a genius at fixing things or knowing how these things operate, but chances are you've never had professional communication training on how to build relationships with customers through the repair process. And so when people take the training through the Power Sport Academy, that's what it, it really means to drive that home. So if we go to answering incoming phone calls, just for an example, I'm gonna say, you know, here's a video lesson on answering the phone. I know it sounds silly, but, but here it is on answering the phone. And it says, while this lesson is based on a little play acting, the message couldn't be clearer. When you answer the phone at a business, you need to take a breath before answering the phone. Tell the caller who you are and find out how you can add value to them at that moment. What I want to do is give you an anecdotal experience as shared by uh, someone that I admire a lot in the automotive industry. His name is Paul, and he owns a company called Dealer Vendor Match. Uh, I was a guest on a show a couple of times. He does a show called Sunday Night Live. It's a live broadcast on LinkedIn. And Paul's got a really good experience in the automotive industry. And so this is a direct, this is a direct plug-in for a power sports talk. He wanted to get a bike rack for his, and I can't remember if he drives like a Porsche Cayenne or you know a BMW X6 or, or whatever, but he's got one of those higher level vehicles. Okay. He calls the parts and accessories department. And he says, Hey, I'm looking for a bicycle rack to fit my, you know, who's a, who, what you call it, what you call it SUV. Okay. It could be any brand, but it's a premium brand. I want you to re recognize that it's a premium brand, you know, for you guys that have multi-line dealerships where you have like Triumph next to Royal Enfield, next to Suzuki, next to Ducati, next to KTM, you know, this is like someone calling you up and saying, you know, I need the trunk locking latch lid uh, thing to my Ducati Multistrada, right? This is this is at the top of the scale. This is your customer, right? This is this is your this is your higher end customer. So Paul calls up and he says, "Hey, I want to get a bike rack for my what you call it SUV." And the guy goes, "Yeah, we don't carry those." Yeah, your video is not broken. I'm not frozen. That was it. That was the call. Hi, I have a whatchamacallit SUV and I'm looking for this type of bike rack for my SUV. Yeah, uh, we don't sell those. If you're a business owner, I hope that you're reeling right now. I hope that you're going, no, there's got to be more. There was no more. And I'm here to tell you that that's happening in your facility too. Okay. Think about all the things that were wrong with that. From, from the perspective of answering the call, we all know that we're supposed to identify the business, right? So, hey, thanks for calling ABC Porsche. And I'm using Porsche because what if it's a Porsche Cayenne, okay? So let's just say, hey, thanks for calling ABC Porsche. The next thing is what? Introduce yourself. My name is Kurt, okay? Thank you for calling ABC Porsche. My name is Kurt. How can I try to add value to you today, right? How can I, you know, how can I try to assist you today? What can I help you with today, right? And then think about, <laughs> I have RBF. I've been accused of having RBF. I didn't realize I had RBF until I started filming myself actually teaching. And I was like, oh my God, people listen to me. Oh, I'm horrible. Um, so 
if you have RBF, which by the way is resting bitch face, if you have RBF, you have to overcome that when you answer these calls. I'm gonna give you an example, right? Thanks for calling ABC Porsche. This is Kurt, how can I help you today? Does that sound like somebody that wants to help you? What if I put a smile on and I'm actually kind of happy to answer the phone? By the way, if you are proactive with your communications, if you're making outgoing calls more than you're you know, taking those incoming calls, but if you're making those outgoing calls, every incoming call is just new sales. It's just new money. So you get happy to take the call, right? And so phone rings, boom, two to three rings. I pick it up and I go, hey, thanks for calling ABC Porsche. My name is Kurt. How can I value you today, right? How can I help you today? You can hear the inflection. You can hear the happiness in the tone, right? Hey, thanks for calling ABC Porsche. My name is Kurt. How can I help you today, right? It, it's, it's, you can hear that somebody actually wants to add value or, or be helpful in that moment. And that right there is adding to the customer relationship, okay? So then, well, I'm looking for, I have a Porsche Cayenne and I'm looking for a bike rack, you know, that, that fits on the back of my, back of my car, like this one. Let's say that I'm looking at a Thule rack, okay? So I'm looking for a Thule bicycle rack to fit on the back of my Porsche Cayenne. So if your dealership doesn't carry Thule bicycle racks as an accessory, would your answer be, we don't sell those? I hope not, right? Next should be a series of questions. If you don't sell those bike racks, it should be a series of questions. Like, hey, I heard those are really nice racks. Uh, what brought your attention to it, right? Uh, what was it about the Thule rack that you really liked? Here's the deal. We don't sell Thule, but we sell this other brand. And it also uses the same hitch fastening uh, technique to match to the back of the truck, back of the car. Um, or, hey, uh, that requires a hitch. Does your car have a hitch? Okay, so I'll need to get you a price for a hitch. And we don't carry the Thule, but we carry a similar bike rack. Would you like me to get you an estimate on that? I might be able to save you some money, right? We're, we're coming up with options. You're problem solving with the customer. Does the customer really need a Thule bicycle rack, this model to fit on the back of their car? They might have it ingrained in their head that that's what they want because their cousin Jim Bob has one. But what's the real reason that they want that Thule bicycle rack, right? You got to find that out. So, so instead of saying, oh, we don't sell those. Oh my goodness. You know, let's find out why. Now let's say you do your job, right? Hey, I carry, uh, I carry the one, two, three bicycle rack. It uses the same hitch mount. Uh, I can get it to you for a hundred dollars less and I can have it here by Thursday and blah, blah, blah. Let's say you do all of that and you still get, you know, let's turn this off. Let's say that you do all of that and you still get a no, no, thank you. I was really looking for the Thule bicycle rack. Now, a couple of things. During that phone call, you should have gotten the customer's name. You should have found out if they've brought their vehicle to service there before, right? So you should know what, the last five or six of the VIN, last eight of the VIN, last whatever the VIN in your system that looks them up, right? If you know their name, you should be able to look them up and go, oh, is that the white Cayenne, right? Like, oh, we see that you had a white Cayenne here for service. Is that the same car? So you should be taking notes of who's calling, why they're calling, and whether you're successful in making a sale or not. You should be tracking lost sales. If 90 people called a Porsche dealer in a month and said they were looking for a Thule bicycle rack and that dealer wasn't selling Thule bicycle racks by the next month, there'd be something wrong with that parts manager, right? So if his staff isn't telling him that people are calling asking for Thule bicycle racks, how's he going to know that he needs to add that brand or that vendor to his list to, to work within his dealership? He won't. And so tracking lost sales is really, really, really important. So think about that whole phone transaction. Like when Paul called in, it was, no, we don't sell those. And that was the end of the conversation. They didn't ask who he was, if he was a previous customer of the dealership, if he was interested in another brand, if he was interested in another product, if his vehicle had the hitch required to use that or not. You know, maybe he wants to look at another option. Maybe he wants one that mounts to the hatchback. Maybe he wants one that mounts to the roof. Maybe he wants one that, you know, whatever, has wings and flies with a drone next to the car. I don't know. But the thing is, nobody will know because nobody took 
a moment of their day to ask him a qualifying question to know if that made sense or not. And so when we break into the training for uh, what we were talking about, when we talk about you know, answering the phone, incoming calls and dealing with that, we're talking about answering the phone and, and answering, actively listening and finding out what the customer wants. Create the want or the need and then problem solve and come up with a solution. In the service environment, that's gonna require making an appointment, right? So when we make the appointment, we're gonna go in, we're gonna make the appointment and this whole lesson is about manipulation. I'll just say it. There are people that will answer the phone at the dealership and act like they're working at McDonald's, meaning, oh, you want a Big Mac? You want fries? You want a milkshake? Great, boom, $13.97, credit card, here you go. If you are writing service for a dealership where people are responsible to make a living off the work you write up, you need to be more strategic in how you bring stuff in, right? If someone says, hi, I'd like to get a full service on my bike on Tuesday, I wanna drop it off at 10, and you write up full service Tuesday, 10 o'clock, what was your name, sir? Bam, 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 bam. Is it still the, you know, the Ninja 1400? Okay, da, 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 great. If you write service like that, you need this training. Because here's the deal, what's a full service? You didn't even clarify what the full service was with the customer, right? Sir, at our dealership, the full service re, you know, refers to you know, an oil change, chain, uh, chain service, driveline service, uh, changing out the brake fluid, uh, flushing the coolant and doing a valve adjustment. Is that what you had in mind for Tuesday? Okay, so that's, that's a, a sizable amount of work. Would you be able to leave that with us possibly overnight into Wednesday, right? Or tell you what, sir, Tuesday, that's the first day of the week for us. We're usually closed on Mondays. Uh, that can be kind of a hectic day and that's a large ticket. Uh, we've got a free pickup and delivery service. What if we could pick up the motorcycle for you like Wednesday night and get it back to you Friday sometime? Would that make sense? Can we do that for you? Problem solve, come up with things. You gotta strategize your schedule so that you keep the technicians as efficient and productive as possible. Now, once your shop gets dialed in on the Power Sports Fixed Operations course and understands the service sales funnel and how to dispatch work to be more efficient than ever, this type of strategy begins to make more and more sense. Um, but as a service writer or as a business development center uh, worker that's taking incoming calls, if your shop's big enough for one of those, you know, if you have a functioning BBC, uh, you need to not only relate to the customer and keep the customer happy, but you also need to schedule work in, in a way to bundle work to keep your technicians engaged, uh, happy and profitable, right? And so it's super important that we do those kinds of things. So we go into that and we talk about how to schedule appointments in a way that makes more sense. Then we talk about how to sell using the phone, right? So Someone comes in, they're getting a motorcycle worked on, the technician has more work to sell. How do you sell that work? And this lesson goes into how to sell that work effectively and ethically, right? We don't tell people they need a bunch of stuff if it's wants. We tell them, these are wants. This is, this is a want, this is a scheduled maintenance concern, and this is a need, right? So, so needs we really need to sell with the priority of a need. And then once we need to sell the priority of a want. Hey, if you want to do this, we can certainly do this for you. Uh, you know, a lot of people like this. You might like it too, blah, 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 right? Owning the problem. Something goes wrong. Sometimes you got to deliver bad news. I put owning the problem as a lesson was a must have for me. There is no way I could have written a lesson on phone etiquette without addressing the delivery of bad news. There's a way to give a customer bad news and still be a winner. You're working on behalf of the customer to keep them informed of a situation. Is the situation a good situation? No, but are you handling it properly? Yes. And when you handle a bad thing in a good way, it translates into a good thing as far as customer relationships go. Remember, in the service industry, the more you can keep the relationship positive with the customer, the less they're gonna call the dealer direct and complain about you. So that's pretty, that's pretty big inspiration right there. But the next thing is, the more that we can take care of people in the service department, the more that's gonna translate into sales for the sales department. And most dealers, most dealer owners really emphasize the importance of selling major units from the sales floor. I know I'm, re I'm, I'm a grown man and I can admit it, sales 
sells the vehicle that creates the service work for service. But they also benefit from the proper relationship that is maintained, restored, or built in service with every other transaction that happens. So if you have a new service customer that comes in that's never bought anything from your dealership, if you treat that person with equity and respect and you give them a good value for their investment, they're going to translate into sales purchases for the sales department over time. I'm a really big believer in seed and harvest type sales. And so the more seeds that you can plant in the service department, the more harvest you're going to have as a business as a whole, right? Whether it's going to be sales, parts, or service, you treating people right at the service counter as the hub of the dealership is what's going to create that harvest for everybody in the process. Folks, I don't want to go way too deep on the phone thing. And like I said, we go over this and some of the consulting calls, the coaching calls that we do on a monthly basis, we've got homework for people. Uh, one of the things that maybe I should have shown you inside here is like people say, well, what's an example of being interactive with these programs? If I go back to sales and phone etiquette and we go to the very first lesson, the very first lesson dealt with answering the phone, right? Well, let's take a look at the interactive part of the lesson. And this might seem silly to some, but this works. See where it says start assignment? Every student's gonna have an assignment to do. And this one says answering incoming calls. What they're gonna do is they're gonna record themselves answering an incoming call, and they're gonna drop that file right there and they're gonna submit their assignment. That's gonna to come to me and the people on my team. And we're gonna review that. And then we're gonna go over that with them on their next coaching call, right? How do you feel you did? How do you feel your voice inflection was? Let's play this back for you now on this call, right? Now that you hear yourself talking to the customer, how do you think the customer that can't see you uh, is interpreting your vocal inflection or your words over the phone, right? Or, hey, it sounded like you were in a hurry. Did you have customers you know, at the counter? Did you have calls on hold? What caused you to be in a hurry during this call? And why were you unable to give this person 100% of your attention that you needed to give them at that time? Right. And so this type of training, this type of interactive training is what brings people to a whole new level. Right. If you read the words to the assignment, it says this may sound odd to do at first, but practice and scripting are the best ways to progress with your phone selling skills. Take a moment to analyze how you answer the calls naturally, then script yourself a more professional approach. Use some type of recording device, voice recorder in your phone is fine, and upload a sample of your accepting a customer call to the assignment upload area in the next screen. Simple. How do you naturally answer the phone, right? Services, Kurt, what's up? Services, Kurt, what's up? Hello, <laughs> right? And then you go, okay, I need to work on something more professional, right? So, you know, ABC Motorcycles, this is Kurt, how can I help you? ABC Motorcycles, this is Kurt, how can I help you? Thanks for calling ABC Motorcycles. This is Kurt. How can I help you? Right? And so you can see through, through scripting and through repetition, it still morphs into something that's more customer centric. Once they dial that in, they record it, they send it to us as the assignment, and then we critique it and have a discussion about it. Folks, we cover all of our topics in a similar way. And we also give the student a chance to give us feedback about what their current work environment is. And we problem solve with them and coach with them to help them overcome other things that are outside the scope of this training. But in the end, it's about giving each student a personal approach to helping them be the best they can at the dealership they represent. And for the dealers, that turns into financial stability, right? A, a reduction in expenses, an elevation of revenue, and a better company culture. And that company culture is going to equal happier customers, which is going to keep your phone ringing less and less. I hope, and by phone ringing, I mean phone with complaints on your cell phone, right? Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this time that we've spent together. Uh, we've been on the call a fair amount of time. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, cut this one short. I'll put the replay up on LinkedIn. I'll probably put the replay up in uh, a page in the Power Sport Academy. And some of you may get this link in an email that comes through. Uh, if you can, and you can take advantage of the 20% discount still, great. I'd love to have you. If you missed the discount, don't hesitate. Just, just hit me with a discovery call and let's see how we can help you move forward as a dealership past that. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.